Hi everyone, this is a sample lesson from a larger course. If you're interested in the full course, check out the link in the description below. In this lesson, we're going to set up the shader for our ground. Okay, so we're just going to create a new layout here for this look dev section. So we'll just press plus here and we'll call this look dev. Okay, and I'm just going to make this timeline a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to just drag out another view here by grabbing this till the little plus icon comes. Just drag it up. Okay, and then I'm going to leave this one as the render view here. And this one's going to be the node editor. So we change this to the node editor. This is where we'll change all of our shaders and make up our shading networks. And then we're ready to go. So the first thing I want to do is just change the shading of these objects here. You can see that the shading is faceted and that's just a simple thing. Uh, we just got to select these guys and let me turn off only render. So we select these guys and we go to shading here and just turn on smooth. So just do that for all of these guys. Smooth, smooth. Okay, those three objects. And then what we can do is in the object, if you go to the data tab, you can go to auto smooth and that will basically automatically add cuts based on the angle. So if your angle is greater than 30 degrees, it will add a hard line. Okay, so it will give you a nice combination of smooth and sharp. So let's do that to this as well. Auto smooth. And this one here as well. Okay, so now what we'll do is assign a shader to this ground. So we're going to select this guy. Go to the materials tab and I'm just going to press this plus to create a new shader and I'm going to call that ground shader. Okay, so you can see you're editing it here because it says ground shader. If you see other nodes, you're going to be in the world mode or the line style. So you can switch between these here and you can also switch between different nodes here as well from compositing and texture. Okay, so it's a little bit confusing sometimes. So just make sure you're on shader here and you should be fine. And then we've got these shaders here and this is basically what we're working on. So we've got this basic shader, this diffuse shader. And what we're going to do is add a camera map to this. So basically what that will do is take this background image and project it on and then you can move the camera around and the texture will stick to it. So what we need to do is first of all apply some UVs to this object in order to do that. In this case you're going to actually add UVs to the object. So let's just go to the UV layout here and then I'm just going to go to the camera view. Very important that you go to the camera view and then so this is going to project it from the view so it's important that you pick a frame that you want to project from. So we're going to choose something near the start so I'm just going to go back a little bit. Let's just go back to the default view here. So we've got the time slider and just come back a bit here and pick a frame where it's not blurry. So we want something where it's not motion blurred. I'm just looking at the background here. So I'm using frame 620. Okay, so I'm going to use 620. Just make sure whatever you frame you're on, just remember that frame because we've got to use that as the texture to project. So let's go back to our UV. And let's just project this out. So we just select these guys, press A. Then I'm going to press U to project from view. And then we've got this. So you can see it looks the same as this, except obviously it's been squashed into a square. And you've got to make sure that you have got camera bounds on. So otherwise it's going to come out like that. So just make sure that these are the options that you've got. Everything else is off and the camera bounds is on. So now we've got our UVs. We can just come out of component mode. Let's go back into this look dev. And then we can assign this texture. So let's just assign that in the usual way. We just go to the shader here and click on this and we'll go to image texture and then we'll go and assign that a vector come in here and just pick UV 
so that the computer knows how to apply this texture to our object. So it's going to use the UVs. And I'm doing it from here because I prefer to do it from here. It's a bit easier rather than creating nodes here. So I just find that easier. And then we can click on open and we can actually, we've actually got this already. So let me just cancel that. We've got something in here with that texture. So we've got this movie file. So I'm going to use that as a texture and I'm going to use frame number 620. So we put the frame in here and we only want one frame. And then in here, oh, let's, let me just show you this when we render it. So let's just, let's go to make this bigger. Let's make this a bit bigger. I'm going to shift Z that. So now you can see we've got the texture here and it's applied to our object. So at the moment, the color isn't matching because it's actually got the lighting in there as well, which is exactly what we want. We want all this shading to come through, but we need to adjust our texture and make it a little bit brighter to match our background. OK, so it, at the moment, it doesn't automatically match. But before I do that, I'm just going to change a setting in the texture here to in this section here, this interpolation changes from linear to closest, which will basically make it nice and sharp. So now you can see the texture is sharper, so it won't interpolate anything, it won't blur it basically. All right, so it's a little bit sharper. So now what we'll do is we're going to match the color. So to do that, we're going to multiply this with a, another color, and that's going to basically color correct that color to make it into this. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just add a mix node, which is very common. So we'll just press Shift A, color, and then mix RGB. And then you can hover it over this line in between, and it's going to automatically collect that up. Pretty handy feature. And then these are the colors that you're actually mixing. So I'm going to change that to 100% so that it's mixed. And then I'm going to change this mix to a multiply. Okay. So when you multiply something, you're basically tinting it. So you're going to multiply that with this color here. Okay. So at the moment, this color is set to 0.5. So if you just set it to one, it should be unaffected. So this is basically the same as what we had. So now what we're going to do is adjust this color so that it matches our background. So we're going to go in here and you've got two different modes here. You've got RGB and HSV. So at the moment, is too dark. So let's just make it brighter. So we can come in here and we can pump up the V. So if we're going to HSV, pump up the value and you can move it above one to just type in something like two and then you can slide it down from there. If you want finer control, hold down shift while you're doing that and you can get a finer control over that. So let's just bring this down a little bit. Okay, something like that. So we've got 0 0.3, 1.3. Um, we'll adjust this in a minute. And then what we'll do is we'll change this color. So at the moment, it's got too much blue in there. So we just go to RGB and remove some blue. So just move this down. Okay, it's still too much blue. Gonna make this a bit brighter again. As you remove color, the brightness will change, obviously. So just gotta add value just to make it a bit brighter as well. And you can add some saturation as well to add a bit more color to it. So you can see the color. And you can see now this has got a bit too much green in it. So you can either add red or remove green. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of red just so it doesn't get too dark. Going to remove a tiny bit of green. Okay, so this section here is matching quite well. This section here is a little bit desaturated, I think. So let's just come in here and change the saturation up a little bit. Okay, remove a tiny bit of green again. Hopefully you can see this in the video. Very, very subtle changes, but Basically, this is how you match the color. So happy with that. 
this is what I've got at the moment. I've got 2.2 on the red, 2.05 and 1.7. And then on the HSV, I've got 1.4, okay? So now you can see the background is basically projected on there, which is pretty cool. And if you sort of scroll ahead a little bit, you can see it kind of stretches a little bit, but we're gonna put a bump map on top of this just to make a bit more detail and it should be fine. And maybe add another texture if we need to. Let's remove a little bit of red actually. This bit looks a bit red. So just going to remove a tiny bit of red. So what we'll do with this is we're going to actually mask out the edge of this and we're going to paint a little mask for that. And so what we'll do is just let's just make the slot that we're going to add that to. So in order to create transparency, we've got to mix two shaders together. So what we're going to do is create a mixed shader node. So I press Shift A. By the way, these add nodes are all in here as well. So you can just press add. You can just click on this menu as well if you want to. And uh, so Shift A is in the shader section, we've got transparent. Okay, I'm going to put that over here. And then I'm going to get a mix shader as well. Shift A again, mix shader. Let's put this in between already, like that. And then we're going to put this in here. So this basically, this node will mix two shaders together based on a black and white image, okay? So you can see here, it's only a single image. These, these colors represent what type of data is going in there. So this will be a vector, this will be a color, which will be three numbers and a black and white image is the sort of gray color here. So at the moment it's mixing between 50%. And so if we change it to zero, you can see that black means that it's not transparent. And then one means that it's transparent, okay? So basically we're going to paint a map, which is going to be black in the middle and white on the outside where we want it to be transparent. But let me just show you, just as an example, if I create a checker, you don't have to do this, this is just to show you what we're doing. So Shift A, Texture, Checker. And I'm using a checker because it's black and white, well, black and gray in this case. Let me just change this to black and white. Okay, and then we can add this, whoops, undo that. We can add the factor to this here. And at the moment it doesn't know how to apply this texture. So we just take this UV and put it into the vector. There's no need to create another one. So now you can see that the black areas are opaque and the white areas are see-through. So the next thing we'll do is use 3D paint, texture paint mode, and just paint a black and white map around the edge of this so that we can make a transparent area. Let me just delete this. Just press X to delete that. In this lesson, we created the shader for our ground and we created a camera mapped texture.